BJ from Morgan Gumbo, I've got my guest here, Josh from Travel Buddy Games. We're talking spicy games, and there's a whole series of games that I have never gotten to play. Uh, but I hear Tom from the Dice Tower always talking about the when it, whenever a new one comes out. And you were talking off air about one called Punkt. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Yeah. So tell me about Punkt. It's part of the, part of the, uh, the gift series, right? Yeah, the gift series of games is a, is a series of abstracts um, that have really – they're they're deep but not complex. Um, so basically, the rules for these games tend to be two pages about how you can move your pieces, um, and then the rest is kind of depth of strategy. They all have a have something that makes the board feel tighter or less usable as time goes on. Um, so the games tend to start feeling pretty open, like I can do my own thing, but tend to escalate to a kind of knife fight in a phone booth. Oh, um, Punkt is is one of the ones that we've been playing lately, and it's it's one of the toughest ones for me. Um, if if you've been gaming for a while, or if you know about classic games, uh, there was a game called Twixt that yeah, was an sure. Avalon Hill game. Punkt was, reminds uh, me an awful lot of that. It was Alex? Um, oh, I can't think of his name. He's no longer around, but uh, yeah, he passed mm-hmm. away. But a pretty famous designer back in the seventies or eighties. Yeah. Um, so Twix, you played Twix because that's tough to get a copy of nowadays. Yeah, I've, I've played it and I still have a copy. I, okay. uh, I cut my teeth on that in uh, in middle school and and loved it. And Punkt reminds me an awful lot of that. The goal of the game, you can see the pieces on the board, um, black pieces and white pieces. I, Each player I've been has staring at this picture, Josh, and I can't figure out what's going on in this game. It doesn't look yeah. like anything I've played before. So It, it probably it. isn't. I mean, the, the goal is to connect two opposite sides of this hex with your own color pieces. And so on your turn, you can place one of your pieces on the board, or you can move a piece that you already have on the board. Um, You might be able to see in this photo that there's a slightly darker kind of center hexagon, and you can't place your starting pieces. Yeah, You're you're not permitted to place starting pieces in that spot. Um, But otherwise, you can place them wherever you want. And then when you move them, you move them along an axis of what's called their punct. And so if you see some of the white pieces have a bright white circle and some of the black pieces have a dark black circle. That's the position you move your pieces from. And by moving pieces, you can straddle other players' pieces, you can pin them down, you can bridge between other pieces. Um, And you really kind of have to think three-dimensionally. Mental spatial management is not something I'm generally very good at. And so I I like to play this, but it it twists my brain in ways that, um, you know, my, my wife Dawn and I play and, she she sees the, sees the moves better than I do, and we, she'll go, oh, I know what you're going to do. And I'm like, you do? Quick, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what we're doing. Well, it looked, it looked a little bit like that Reiner Canizia game that I have with the um, – I can't remember. It's got the, the two colors on each end, and you're trying to match up the colors as you put them on. But you're, it's the typical Reiner Canizia scoring where you always want to bring your last place score up because that's your actual score. The low, oh, it's, it's not in Ingenious. That's it. Yeah. Ingenious. So I was thinking of that, but then it's only two colors. And like you said, it's got that off color dot and that's the axis of rotation, right? That's, that's yeah. where, where it rotates. You, you move your pieces from that point. So you can move them, you know, across the board, as long as that piece stays in a straight line and then rotate it where they land. So I, it's, it's certainly one of the more complicated GIF games for my brain. Um, but it's, I don't know if, if you like abstracts, the whole series is a, is a joy to play. And honestly, I think this is, this may be the ugliest of the series. They honestly generally look like works of art on the table. And I don't think this is an exception. I think it looks great, but some of them are, are downright beautiful. <laughs> and that is pung, punct. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> I mean, I say I say punct, but punct. Uh, okay. again, I didn't design it. I didn't put the umlaut on there. So maybe somebody uh, more familiar with language can give us both a lesson. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm convinced it's just a made up word, but that's a, pre- that's a pretty cool looking game. One, and my wife and I both like those kind of abstract games. So we're going to have to try it.